Today we're going to talk about destructors, and if you're asked about them, why you might not want to take that job. Now something you learn here today gets you a job. So initiate a mouse click event over the like button, and if you enjoy this channel, subscribe. So what is a destructor? Well, a destructor is a special method that cleans up when an object is being destroyed. Kind of like the opposite of a constructor, which sets things up. Let's look at how we do a constructor first. Now, everyone knows what a constructor is. It's a method responsible for taking new objects and getting them ready for use. It's automatically invoked upon initialization and has the same name as the class name. And if you don't put one in your class, it's cool. The C-sharp compiler will just create one for you. But what is this? This has no access modifier. It has a tilde right here. I can't overload it with anything. What is this thing? Well, this is a destructor. And it had its heyday back in 2003 when Get Rich or Die Trying was number one on the Billboard Hot 200. The destructor is used to clean up memory resources. That's why there's no access modifier. Public or private has no meaning to the garbage collector. See, back in 2003, you might have a destructor if you were calling some kind of unmanaged system resource, like an unmanaged C++ library that ran an elevator or a piece of surveying equipment. You might use a destructor to free those resources at the end of an object's life. But shouldn't freeing an unmanaged resource be part of your class's logic? Why would you give that job to a garbage collector that's going to do it whenever it decides to do it? Well, you wouldn't do this. That's probably why you've never even seen a destructor before. In fact, in order to show you how this works, I have to use an older version of .NET. So here I'm using .NET Fiddle, which is a really useful resource if you ever need to try something out without firing up Visual Studio. I've got uh, .NET 4.7 selected, and I wrote a quick program. Here I have class alpha, which has a destructor. Now uh, it's gonna print out console right line class A's destructor, and I have Bravo, which inherits from alpha, um, and this is going to write out B's destructor. Now, Bravo is going to get created. We're going to set Bravo to null. We're going to call the garbage collector, and we're going to wait for it. And when this ends, this should fire, and this should print out, and this should print out. Let's see. Well, down here it worked. Here's B's destructor, which this was destroyed before Alpha was destroyed because it inherits from Alpha. And then... A was destroyed right when the program ends. So you can imagine using this here to close connections or whatever if you're dealing with unmanaged code. Let's select a more modern version of .NET and run it and see what happens. Nothing, nothing happens. So .NET Core is going to run the garbage collector whenever .NET Core wants to, which is probably gonna be when you're about to run out of memory. So you can't rely on destructors or finalization anymore. Then why is the destructor interview question even being asked? Well, most companies it isn't. Do a Google search and destructor and C-sharp interview questions. Look at the websites that come up. See how old they are? Nobody makes websites that look like this anymore. None of these websites are newer than 2010. So in an interview, if somebody asks you, what is a destructor? Say, a destructor is a method that performs cleanup when a class is destroyed. So take it as a red flag that maybe this company is using older technology or maybe their developers haven't learned anything new. So keep this in mind during the process and good luck on your next interview.